Master Card. Good morning, I'm Pat, KJ5Y, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about remoting, remote hams. Uh, it's the focus of this presentation, which is a software slide. Uh, gives credit to Brandon Hansen, who's the architect. He also is the software engineer over at Ellacraft, the K3 radio that uh, is the grand prize today. And uh, he's put quite a lot of time into this software. It's an integrated system. It has rotator controls. I mean, uh, the amplifier, everything is available right from his client software here. And remote. Um, who uses remote? Of course, broadcast stations. Every broadcast station has a remote tower these days. I don't, there's not many that have their studio right there, you know, where they're broadcasting from. And, of course, public safety. Police all use it. Uh, emergency. And now hams are finally getting in the game. We were usually first, weren't we? But anyway, it's great. Uh, Echo Link for a while. Two meters is available. Uh, a lot of you may have used Echo Link through the internet. Um, K5DX, I use that one a lot. And then local remotes is where you have your software that came with your radio, you know, on your desktop, and you just don't want to operate the knobs locally and do it from your computer. That's another, I do that, because I like the interface on remote hams. It's simple, it gets the controls that I use the most in a compact area, you know, it's easier for me, it's not as busy. Private remotes is when you have, like, Team Viewer. Anybody familiar with Team Viewer? Remote desktop. That's where you just have it. Like the one before, you have the local software running, and then you Team Viewer in to your system, and you, you control it remotely, you know, with remote desktop. And then there's issues of bringing sound across. The remote ham software takes care of that. It's got a very good VOIP system already integrated into it. It's, it was borrowed from uh, Skype, so it's a very good system. And then public remote, that's what we're doing. I'm sharing my stations with ham radio. I think DX is, is exciting. Not everybody can have a good antenna and an HOA, so I've got big antennas, big watts. You can log into my station and hear DX that you can't even tell is there on a vertical, you know, at your house or something. It opens a whole new world. And so, you know, and some, some people are fortunate enough to have a place out in the country somewhere, and they might, you know, want to set a station up there. Be able, if you've got Internet available, you're all set. It's real easy. And we'll talk about that. Uh, the basics, operate from any location on the Internet, fully operate the station, all modes, whatever, control the rotator. I talked about skins. Uh, it looks on the screen like your radio, that's the skin, and they have now where you could pick different ones, and you can turn off, like I stated earlier, certain controls you don't want your remote people jacking with, like the AF gain, you're sitting in the shack, you don't want everybody turning the volume wide open. They've got their own volume. They don't need that. There's, you know, and I don't want people messing with some of the past band tuning and stuff, so I took all that off so they can't get to it. It's better. And then here's their website. If you just type remotehams.com, and up here at the top, well, need a pointer or something, but where it says uh, online remotes on the toolbar at the top, <clears throat> if you click on that, it, it'll show a list of all the remotes that are connected to this system. <clears throat> the system really isn't a system. It's, it's like a virtual, you know, uh, you're connecting, when you connect to my radio through the internet, you're connecting to my IP address. He just has, you know, a rerouting system that routes it behind the scenes to me. So you're not seeing my IP address. So what is that called? Does anybody help me with that? It's, a, it's like a virtual private network, but it's where you don't have, you know, a, a fully qualified domain name, whatever. But anyway. They also have down here at the bottom, you see that little device on the left of that tablet. That's the orb that, where you can plug your microphone in and your key. I'm cheap. I didn't buy one. They're $160. You know, you can plug it in the USB port of your 
of your laptop or some tablets, I guess. I'm not sure what the interface is there. It looks like a USB. Do tablets have USB? Some do. I'm kind of behind the time, so maybe that's what that is. But anyway, if you're if you dead set on having a microphone and a key, there you go. You buy that. You don't need it. This system is entirely free. Brandon's done it on his own time. Elecraft pays him, and he's he's actually produced this software so that it mimics a K3 behind the scenes for contest software. You can connect to a virtual serial port that the thing spawns, and the software like N1MM or whatever you use thinks it's a K3. You might have a TS590 connected to this at your house, but you can use it and it thinks it's a K3. That's the, re the basic, and you've got a computer dedicated at your house where it says remote station connect to your ICOM or whatever you got. In your amp, there's another serial cable running from the from the computer to the linear. If you've got an expert amp or one of these newer, you know, that are remote controllable with USB ports and such, you can use a laptop and a hotspot to connect to. That's I do that a lot. We're going to do that today with this contest, but we don't have to use my phone as a hotspot because they said they've got fast internet here. We'll find out. <laughs> but anyway, so. You can also use a phone app. The phone app is um, not iPhone based, so they don't have it in that iPhone uh, system yet, but it is in the Android system. So use it on tablets and everything. Then this is kind of what we do. We've got remotes all over the place, and I'll be connected to two at once, you know, and everybody's just going crazy with this stuff. I have five people, you know, Jimmy and uh, Needs are no telling who will be connected. We'll all be sitting there chatting. There's a chat room that we could talk back and forth while the DX is going on on the remote. We can be listening to it together. So, oh, let's tune to this frequency, you know, and we'll do it. And uh, I want to work this. So we kind of take turns and play good together. Some, you know, haven't seen people get upset. We'll talk about that later. Requ required hardware is the client computer with sound card. Actually, the the rig is the sound card. We'll get to that more later. I'm using Windows 10. This this presentation's a little old. I don't think they had 10 then. Uh, RC4 client, and that's here. The blue one is you download for your laptop to run your computer or somebody else, run your station or run somebody else's station. If you don't have a station, you're just getting back in the hobby. There's lots of generous hams out there that'll let you operate their rig anytime. You just get on there and find one and you know, send them a note and say, hey, can I operate this? It even has a system to ask for permission to transmit. I'll show you that in a minute. And then the server, the black download, that's where you have the computer that's dedicated, set up, you know, on, on your station that you want to share to the Internet. It's real easy. I'll get to that. There's drop-down menus for the, the pick the rig, like I've got a TS-590 hooked to mine. And it's right there. You click. Select the COM port that it's on with the USB cable. You, plug, you have one hose between the computer and the rig, a USB cable. That's it. Everything goes through that hose. The, the VOIP and all the telemetry control, everything goes through that. Okay, it's built, like I said before, Brandon Hansen, KG6YPI. He's very accessible, too. If you need anything, I've got him on Skype. I just call him, hey, this isn't working. Oh, yeah, you didn't do this right. It's always cockpit trouble on my part. But so far, the software is rock solid. I haven't had any, you know, seen any bugs with it. Uh, latency issues drove the development of what he's currently doing, if you read through that. It's a C++ of VB.net with Flash Player. Is the, the screen you're seeing is, is Adobe Flash. So um, there's the screen. Here's one on the left that's a manufacturer screen, real busy. I'm not sure if that's Yesu or Kenwood. I don't know if it says. But anyway, see how busy that one is on the left? And the remote ham screen, I just put a few controls on it. That one's busier than mine. I've got sliders. I've got like three sliders. Sliders would be like your RF gain, uh, your passband high, passband low. How do you tune a pilot? Tune, tune what? A pileup? Yeah. Uh, what I do is, you mean work, work at split operation? Oh, yeah, large ones. You can uh, set 
with the buttons at the top. It's A, B, A equals B, and toggle back and forth between A and B. And you just click directly on the uh, little up-down arrows on the digit to change frequency. And there's, there's spotting built in. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, from the, all this stuff talks about how you piece the portions that you see in the left and the bottom. There's a chat window, and you can move those around and get them and save it the way you like it, which this is the way I like it, I think. I've got it saved like that. Uh, there's a uh, DX cluster button. I'll show you all that in a minute. All right. Uh, skin examples, different rigs. Uh, you know, I could put an Elecraft skin on a Kenwood radio if I wanted to. It would look, why would I want to do that, though? I like Kenwood. But anyway, so there you go. You can do all those different skins. Advanced client features. Uh, now, I talked about the VSP interface. That's what you want to connect this program to a contest software, like N1MM. I spawn mine. I tell it to go to Kate at COM1, because I don't use serial ports, except the ones the rig's on. And they're like COM3 and COM5, I think, the, the rig and the, and the amplifier. And uh, so I tell it to spawn COM1, and then I tell N1MM to go after COM1, and that it's an Elecraft K3. Everything's good. Works perfect. All right. And here you go with the uh, server screen. It's pretty simple. Doesn't require many resources. Runs in the background. That's what it looks like. Usually minimize it and you don't see it. That's sitting out at your remote at your ranch or something, running all the time. And then if you have a, a need to remote control it, you could remote into that rig with like Team Viewer and uh, you know reboot the server sometimes requires a reboot, not too often. Uh, okay, it supports all these transceivers and more. There's a huge list. Uh, if you don't see yours there, don't worry. It's probably there. Um, some of the FCC rules, as long as you're in the same, this is a burning question, I don't know for everybody else, just say it now. As long as you're in the same DXCC entity for working in other countries, somebody could be in California and use my station and talk to a Russian, and it would count for them for DXCC. They don't have to tell them that they're remote portable W6. They're not portable. They're a fixed station. The way you're supposed to identify is the call prefix for that area, like if I used a California station, I'd say W6 slash KJ5Y. You put, put it in front, not behind it. And so it's not a requirement, um, but the, uh, you know, the, according to the FCC, it's not. There are certain contests that address remoting, though, and you have to abide by the, the rules of that contest, of course. All right, and so you've got to have the station protected against unauthorized transmission. We've got a user list. I okay and grant anybody that's going to transmit on my radio transmit privileges. And that's a simple process. You know, verify their license. He does the, the license verification before they can sign up on his system. But then the other layer of it is each operator that owns a remote that is allowing it for public ham use, uh, you know, allows. Uh, control op required if a non-licensed person is there wanting to talk. You can, you know, identify, you can break in and say this is KJ5Y, Third party traffic was, you know, Kurt, if he didn't have a license or something, you know, or my wife or whatever. That hasn't happened yet. The kid behind me is interested in ham radio, though, and I told him to log in the remote and I'd let him talk to somebody. You can put the server anywhere, you know, put it up on top of uh, Pike's Peak, you know, as long as it's in your DXCC entity. Here's, uh, you know, the people that are responsible for it. Brandon's done the lion's share of the work. Scott uh, is the conceptual design of it. Nuts and bolts for him. And then Rogers, special thanks to him, W8RJ. He does the uh, drivers for the different rigs. Uh, he just did the one for the IC7300. It works okay. It's, it needs, needs some tweaking. But uh, And then there's the uh, 
places where you can download it. And that's Remote Hams. All his gear got fried. He was at China Buffet. When his son called with the news, he almost choked on his egg roll. His insurance was overdue.